My name's uh, Dr. John uh, Runback. I'm actually in Teaneck, New Jersey. I have a esteemed uh, panel uh, to my left here. We have uh, Warren Sui, who's actually with Dr. Julian, uh, and he's going to be able to uh, relate his personal experience with the practice down there. Next to him, we have Arthur Lee. Uh, I think Dr. Uh, Mustafa's going to join us, and then we have Chris Lassar down at the end. And we have all disciplines uh, represented, which I, I think is very important in this particular uh, field. I want to extend uh, thank you to CSI, too, for supporting this lunchtime meeting. The uh, lunchtime session is going to be CLI treatment in a freestanding interventional center by Dr. Julian, uh, who established this many, many years ago and is a leader in doing these sort of procedures in the outpatient uh, environment. It's going to be really exciting to watch. Those are my disclosures. Uh, I do have a consultancy agreement with CSI. So this is uh, the panel, as I said, and the agenda, as we just uh, talked about. I have about three minutes here to sort of make an introduction. And by way of introduction, I just want to introduce three key concepts. And these key concepts are going to be discussion you know, uh, uh, platforms for the uh, panel up here today, and things that, as we go through this, I'm hoping that they will be able to address. The first key concept, which we've already heard about a little bit today, is this idea of optimizing perfusion to the ischemic tissue bed, whether it be uh, a wound or a rubrous toe or whatever might be causing some sort of ischemic uh, pain. And uh, I'm going to talk about this idea of angiosomes, which is based upon free flap technology and is a cross the room assessment, versus an angiographosome, which is looking at the angiogram, understanding vascular variations, and revascularizing single or multiple vessels based upon the angiographic pattern of perfusion. We're doing a little bit of work on this, and I think we're going to see, and we'll be able to discuss uh, today, that you know, this is a relatively advanced concept in which numerous patterns exist whereby you actually perfuse wounds other than the typical direct flow angiosome, uh, angiosome with which we're most uh, familiar. There's variant flow, which is quite common, has been uh, described uh, very uh, nicely in CC, uh, CCI. Uh, competitive flow patterns obviously flow through the pedal loop. At the end of the day, you may not get direct perfusion, but it might be way of, way of collateral perfusion. And the idea of wound blush is an emerging concept. And this is just a slide, sort of a placeholder, that I know that certainly on the Viva side and the Vascular Leaders Forum, we're moving forward to sort of come up with a, uh, a better and more refined welcome. Uh, definition of what constitutes angiographic success utilizing some of these concepts. The next sort of key point, which is going to be important for discussion, I'm really going to be uh, interested as we talk to Bill, particularly in the outpatient setting, is, you know, how do you choose your devices? Obviously, you know, when you approach a case, you have sort of a, a, a generalized decision process, which I like to call CADE, which is clinical, anatomic, device, and evidence. And all of these things come into play in an instant when you look at a case. Probably most of us can sort of look at a lesion and say, this is what I would do, right? And behind the scenes in your brain, you're sort of applying these things. I'm going to sort of be asking uh, the panel as we go uh, what they would do and on what basis they would make their decisions. Obviously, in this is not just the recanalization tools, but a wide array of revascularization tools, which are available to us to treat these patients who have either relatively minimal or extraordinarily complex patterns of uh, occlusive disease, both infraingual and infrapopliteal, as well as now increasingly into the foot. The last key concept which we're going to talk about and we're going to see some great examples of is alternative accesses in addition to traditional uh, contralateral or antigrade femoral accesses. Uh, I think that if you're going to be doing CLI, as you've seen today, you need to be very familiar uh, with utilization of these different access uh, points as well as the technologies that are associated with it. And perhaps more important, what the decision factors are, whereby, and how you would arrive upon using alternative uh, uh, access. We're going to see a case today where there's a patient issue. Uh, I think that uh, Dr. Mustafa has made a lot about looking at cap anatomy and the shape of the occlusion and the presence of uh, collaterals. The puncturability of arteries, your familiarity with the technology and comfort with uh, ultrasound, uh, whether you think the devices are going to perform as you need to either cross or re-enter, all critical in your deciding whether you're going to approach a case primarily antegrade, primarily retrograde, or in a combined antegrade, retrograde, or what we call rendezvous fashion. So I'm hoping this will sort of be a springboard for a very robust discussion here. 